The Pokemon Unite developers are breaking out all of the fan service to make the Halloween event as successful as possible because Sableye and Zoroark are being added into the game. How did we get this information? Was it another crazy data mine? No, an official post about the public test. And then they're just straight up saying it. And also, I guess people will find out through the public test when Zoroark and Sableye are available to play for testing. And this is also following the crazy news that Clefable will finally be added into Pokemon Unite. So yeah, a lot of big fan service moves. And the data mine has begun with El Chico Eevee. Zoroark and Sableye looking good. I'll give my thoughts later once we break down more of the news. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, comment your thoughts down below. So yeah, now it's like instead of getting a random patch or an update and then the data mine just kind of spoiling the new Pokemon, it's all happening through the beta servers. Let's see what else is happening. Changes will be made to Cramorant, Mr. Mime, Glaceon, Charizard, Absol, Aegislash, Blastoise, Wigglytuff, Gengar, Mew, and Slowbro's moves. And then Azumarill and Buswool will be getting stat adjustments. So also distinguishing from the balance changes. That is pretty interesting. I honestly feel like Buswool's moves just need more damage for levels 1 and 3. Or else you just lose all of the wild Pokemon contest. And it also means you're kind of a weak jungler compared to all the other Pokemon. And since Buswool lives and dies by being super far ahead and then using its Unite move and then getting its Beast Boost snowballing, it's kind of an awkward place. I don't know if the stats will do much. The only time we saw stat changes be successful was for Wigglytuff very early on in the game. But Wigglytuff had like 30% durability added in, or even more. It got ludicrous stats off of that. And if you're doing that to Buzzful or Zumeril, then you have a very problematic Pokemon. Snowballing mechanics, you know, KO ramp ups. Those. League of Legends has struggled to balance those for years, and now Buzzful is kind of in that spot where it kind of has to be bad. And under the most snowbally of win harder games then it can finally be useful same thing for zoomer pokemon still pops off every once in a while but i do want to give my thoughts on the balance changes here so cramorant i don't even know anymore what the devs want to do with cramorant like dive air slash always been the worst move set it got nerfed in the last patch and then like surf hurricane devs just seem to hate it or will they finally put some power back into whirlpool because that was just an unnecessary nerf from the beginning like now that players know how to secure and understand the game a bit better it's not just like brainless zero skill whirlpool setting gets to steal all the pokemon then people feel like cramorant's unfair that's really what happened in the japanese beta like the first beta in japan and then the release of the game now yeah like players don't just lose to it anymore please put some whirlpool power back into the game Mr. Mime has to be a nerf because the Pokemon, like, I don't get it. Mr. Mime was S tier. Just no one knew how to play it. And very few people, but then they were, like, completely taking over games with it. So then they buffed an S tier character into triple S tier. The nerfs didn't do anything. Like, the hotfix just kind of made it to where Kramer, or not Kramer, Mr. Mime wasn't the most oppressive thing in the game, but still really strong. And then it's been two patches the hotfix and then the map changes, and they still didn't fix the power plus bug power or not power plus power swap plus bug to where when tethered and using confusion on power swap plus it doesn't stun the target anymore when the previous ranks do that so weird and then everyone's been running psychic which is still the worst move set compared to psychic power swap i don't know mr mom's in a weird state probably some nerfs definitely needs them and then it's gonna be funny if it got the Garchomp treatment to where Garchomp like on launch and when it had its level 10 scaling before the adjustment to level 9 was the strongest Pokemon in the game besides Zorark, depending on like your state with Gengar. But then when they made it more accessible through level 9, which is a perceived buff, they actually made it worse. So I'd be funny if this actually nerfs Mr. Mime into like A tier and then just makes it weaker than before the initial over buffs. Who even knows what the devs anymore? Glace like, the Pokemon Unite player base just sucks, and because of that, the balance is kind of weird, and, like, the beta test only happens in, like, Singapore or, you know, not North America, so you're also getting, like, weird pockets of the community. And then there's also, like, Chinese beta tests and stuff, so, like, the exclusivity of the beta test is not going to get a good enough testing. It's mostly for, like, bug fixes, but any balance that comes out of beta, we can see just, like, making the game really weird. 
Glaceon got nerfed is another buff to the um, other move that is worthless and no one remembers it. Icy Wind. Icy Wind still does no damage. It's not worth it at all. Icicle Spear is the best. Even though with the nerf to Icicle Spear, Glaceon's still playable. Do they buff a little bit back? Do they um, buff the other move? Wow. I just I just pulled up the page to like look at the moves and then I completely forgot again. Freeze Dry. Yeah, like a giga buff to Freeze Dry would be interesting and maybe kind of like split up how Glaceon plays. But no, Ice Shard, Icicle Spear just way too strong, and once you master that skill cap, Pokemon is pretty, pretty good. So, Charizard, Absol, guessing buffs, no idea what they're doing with Aegislash, or Blastoise, like, these are, like, the weird Pokemon. Uh, Gengar needs a nerf, Mew needs a nerf, Slowbro needs a buff, Wigglytuff, I don't know if they feel it landed too strong, or if they really want to make Wigglytuff, like, a high priority pick, so they're gonna be buffing it even more. Since they didn't give it enough damage, Wigglytuff still falls off into non-existence in the later stages of the game. Um, talking about the Pokemon being added in, did a video on Clefable, it's cool that's coming back. And then Sableye, I think Sableye is going to be a natural fit, and what's that? A yellow border? After a support drought, we're getting two supports being added into the game, pranks through supporter Sableye, that's really the only direction it could have gone in, and I'm really happy to see that, and yeah, it's something I've wanted early on, like, you know if Sableye came in, or any pranks to Pokemon, for some kind of supporter niche would be really interesting to see, so that's going to be pretty cool. And then Zoroark, everyone's been wanting to see Zoroark since the game launched, especially because it has, like, same thing with Ditto, but I think Ditto is a lot weirder to put into the game. But when it comes to something like Zoroark, how is that illusion ability going to work? How are they going to play around it? It's, it's probably going to be like Nico in League of Legends, but then it's more buttons. You know, we're watching the UI change all the time now with something like Mew, where you're like, oh yeah, there's a different interaction for how Mew resets. Same thing with Hoopa. You press the R joystick to then move around the map more. So, I don't know how, like, how many buttons you're going to have to press to make uh, Zoroark work and how that's going to be a thing in selecting the illusion and if it works, or some other shenanigans. So it's going to be interesting to see how the kit plays out. But it's cool that it's being added into the game. A lot of people want to see that, especially for just the gimmick that it can bring to the table. Until we see the data mine, which is probably going to happen pretty soon. It's probably going to happen pretty soon. Oh yeah, and then it also has an ex like an exclusive move, so of course that's going to make things e even spicier. We'll see how it goes. I just don't like that everything's either like, oh, data mine exclusive access, or you have to play on a hack server, or you have to download and play into the beta, and then all those people get like an advantage in it. So that's that's kind of unfortunate. That's the state of things with Pokemon Unite. I want it to be like the honest, everyone has equal access to the game kind of thing, but it looks like that wasn't the case, and that's disappointing, and until they split the queues, the game is going to be dead. Also, we got some, like, updated information about the Chinese beta. So, Chinese beta leak, here's translated the beta, beta text, pretty sure it will change from draft mode ban pick. So, this is going back to, yeah, like, pick ban from one of the Chinese betas. Thing is, it was NDA'd, and that's why it was, like, kind of obscure on the information, and this was the April Chinese beta. So we're going to see how that develops with the new Pokemon, with the other beta tests, and then if we see a pick ban being implemented into Pokemon Unite. Not what the game needs, but alright. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.